hurt, heal, hurt, hurt, Botch. hurt, 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 hurt. Was that the worst WWE pay-per-view main event result and finish ever? Usually, these are hyperbole, and we say, well, no, th no, it wasn't. There's loads of other things. WCW was a thing back in the late 90s. However, this is in the freaking conversation. Yeah, it wasn't great, was it? I'm Ollie Davis. This is Lou Cohen. Welcome to the Hell in a Cell 2019, hell being the operative word there, review edition of Wrestle Talk Live. Please press the thumbs up button, give us a subscribe, leave a comment down below saying what you thought of the show, and of course, get in your su su super chats because we are joined by WrestleTalk.com's Randy Andy Datsun, and I've just remembered. He's actually not reading out the super chats, but there he is. Yeah, there he is. He is. Without he is. a microphone, we'll be doing it because we have the mod mother, Lady Sue or Lady mm. Lou. Lady Lou. Lady Lou. My apologies on the super chats, uh, taking care of all of that, and also stick around until after the show because uh, and go over to Screen Stalker. Because we're launching our live Screen Stalker show today. It's not just Wrestle Talk Live, it's also Screen Stalker Live. Which features the full return of Housemate Simon. Housemate Simon and Laurie are going to be talking about Star Wars. There's a character missing from all the promotional stuff. A controversial character, no yeah. less, in some circles. Uh, Ghost Recon, uh, it's bad reviews. And uh, Joker uh, Box Office, I believe, is also going to be a topic of conversation. And... We're all going to get together and play WWE 2K19 and try and recreate, nay, improve uh, this Hell in a Cell show. Yeah, we can play as Bray Wyatt and we're going to beat the hell out of Seth Rollins. We might just make Seth Rollins a non-playable character, like a, a, you know, one of us, but no one will control him and we'll just beat the crap out of him. In fairness, if we play against Laurie, then that will be the yeah, case anyway. The case. Yeah. So let's talk about... This match, we'll get onto the Wrestle League standings after we've discussed it. Uh, so, the whole night actually was surprisingly good for my expectations. I thought that the opening women's Hell in a Cell match was really fun. I don't think it was just this brilliant match like a lot of people are saying. I've seen some people call it a yeah. match of the year contender, yeah, which I, I think is a really strong... Well, and we'll get we'll get on to that, yeah. but yeah, so, but I'm happy that so many people enjoyed it. I just thought it was a fun spot fest. Yeah. Didn't really get much character from it. Uh, and then like you had the Brian Roman Bludgeon Brothers match. Spoilers, my match of the night. Yeah, I thought it was really fun. Yeah, yeah, really, really fun. Uh, and then you know those are two of the only two of the three matches that have been announced Four. prior to oh okay prior to Saturday prior yeah. to the weekend. So you know you've just put those at the front, and then you've got like a Quite a long, not boring middle, but nothing to separate it from a, a weekly episode of TV. Well, that's where I, yeah, that, that's what I would like to, that, that's, that was my thoughts on it as well, is it felt like a Raw episode mm. or your regular episode of SmackDown. It didn't feel like a pay-per-view. And I got very, very bored throughout the middle. But all the time I was getting bored, I kept thinking, but we've got that main event. We have got Seth Rollins versus The Fiend inside Hell in a Cell. We've got that coming up. I can get my kicks from that. Basically, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to see The Fiend win the title. Yeah, at the end of the day, this was a one-match card. And sometimes you're like, oh, a one-match card. That match better go really long and be really, really good. I'm thinking a card or Omega. But no, in this case, it was almost a one-result card, <laughs> if you'll give me that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was only going to be happy if one thing happened, and that's The Fiend wins the Universal title. It could be a 20-minute match. I'd prefer it to be a 30-second match. But all I care about, really, is that the hottest thing in not just WWE, but we, as we discussed earlier, probably wrestling as a whole, The Fiend is hotter than AEW as a company, I would argue, that WWE put their top championship on him, and then you just take it from there. I don't personally know where you would go from there, but... This is the right move. And it's the corner they booked themselves into, not by, like, design or anything. They just said, oh, we're going to put Bray Wyatt in a title match. We're going to put The Fiend inside Hell in a Cell and put him in a title feud with Seth Rollins. It's almost like they booked that and they were like, oh, actually, I don't think we, we don't want to put the title on him, but, pff, well, we're here now, I guess. Either that or 
I, so I've, I've been thinking about this a lot today, as you'd quite imagine. Well, did, should we say what happened first? Yeah, please Just do. Just in case, because a lot of people don't watch WWE, and, I, you know, after this, <laughs> power to you. I, I, I want to be there with you sometimes. <laughs> so what happened, you had a, uh, a long match, so it probably about went 20 about minutes. 15, 20 minutes, yeah. yeah. All of it was in red light. That was the first annoying thing for me. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like it. It, it. it really, apparently in the arena, that, it was that, very difficult to see. This is an effect on the thumbnail. Like, we didn't, yeah. put, we didn't wash over the colour. If you've not seen the show, this is what the match looked like the entire time. I really think it, it certainly took me away from investing in the action. And, and so much of The Fiend is like, he looks quite vibrant and colourful when he's there in real life and mm. not with this red filter. Plus, the, you painted the cage red! Now I can't. That was for nothing. <laughs> I'm not even into the red cage. Just so many little bits annoyed me. Anyway, you have this match. The story that they tell is Seth Rollins has to keep chucking finishers at Bray. L- like, I think about 11 stomps. Yeah, he did like 11, 12 stomps. Bearing in mind when he put down Braun Strowman, that was four stomps and a pedigree. And Brock Lesnar was a fair number. Of stomps. I think the stomp is like the worst finisher in WWE at the moment. It's one of the coolest looking though. Yeah, but it's the least effective. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then he did like 11, 12 stomps on break, but he just kept getting back up. So Seth would go and get a chair and he'd hit the ch- he'd hit uh, Bray with the chair, he'd still kick out. So he went and got a ladder, and he hit the ladder onto the chair, and he still kicked out. Then he wanted to go and get a little lunchbox that had tools inside of it. Some might say it's a toolbox. And then he swung the toolbox at the, the chair and the ladder to make... An, I think there was a microphone inside that toolbox, or a mighty clatter. If Seth's holding that box, it's a toolbox, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> nice, I like what you did there. Yeah. And then, that still wasn't enough. So he went to the outside and he grabbed a sledgehammer, the most protected weapon in WWE. Just look who used it. And it's always the most dangerous weapon. More dangerous than Bray Wyatt's mallet that he brought out during the match. And he goes in there and the referee's like, whoa, you're taking it too far now with the old sledgehammer. Don't do it, Seth. Don't do it. And Seth stood there and he contemplated for what felt like 10 minutes. And then eventually he went, F it. And he swung the hammer down onto the ladder and the chair and the toolbox and whatnot. And the referee, ding, 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 he calls for the bell to ring. We all thought, oh man, Seth's been DQ'd. And the the Fiend wins via disqualification. That's a terrible, terrible finish because, how in the hell, to quote X-Pac, how can you have a DQ in a Hell in a Freaking Cell match? But that's not what the finish was, actually. The finish was ref stoppage. Seth won by kicking too much ass. Yeah, so the, the website article doesn't really say Seth won. It just said that like, the match was stopped because of ref stoppage. But, but like, that means Seth won. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, it's like there's, that's what they say. Oh, it's not a DQ. Don't worry. It was a ref stoppage. I'm like, but do you know that means Seth won? Yeah. And they're not really like, they're, they're not acknowledging that. I fully expect on Raw tonight... They're not going to say Seth won. No. They're going to say the referee called off the match. But by doing that, that implies Bray could no longer compete, which means Seth won. That's how all the other combat sports work. And it's a fin... Like, I usually like it when the referee goes, no, 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 you can't continue. You win. Like, I, I hope... I wish wrestling did it more. Boom, knockout. Call it off. It's a knockout finish. I love the... I always go back to the Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, their first match in NXT when Owens won the title. Mm. When Owens won via ref stoppage because he was beating Sami up too much. I always remember Vinny from the Brian and Vinny show reviewing it being like, I sank into my chair thinking like, oh, what a disgustingly lame finish because that's just a way for Sami to keep the title. And no, they gave Kevin Owens the title. It's like, yes, because Kevin Owens won because he was the better man. Yeah. He won via ref stoppage. Yeah, but here... That wasn't the case because everyone wanted The Fiend to win. Ooh, because that's sort of what WWE have been positioned. I, I feel like there's going to be a well, a very small backlash because I, I think 99% of fans agree with our feelings towards the end of this pay-per-view. But I think there also will be a few people who go, well, you know, you shouldn't get your hopes up so much. You, you got carried away with fantasy booking that Bray should win and then do this, this, this and this. But that's... That's the story they were... And it's not even the story they were telling. It was just that's what they should have done. I don't think we're being entitled by saying you should put the title on this guy who everyone is into and take it off the guy that nobody's into currently. And the other really... Uh, I, 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 
an argument I've completely disagreed with since I woke up this morning. I'm seeing people online saying that it was never about the title. The Fiend just wanted to hurt Rollins. Then why book him in a bloody title match then? If it was never about the title, if, if Bray never wanted to win the title, why put him in a bloody title match? Yeah. Yeah, you could have just booked a Hell in a Cell non-title match, made that part of the story. Yeah. Bray beats him because then you're not against the wall. And then Bray goes, huh, now I want to come for your title. And you, t- yeah. you tell that story. So another thing is, uh, unless this is a double turn and Seth is turning heel, which I doubt, but, you know, there is an argument to be made for it. WWE have turned their supposed top baby face into a heel throughout the course of this match. Nobody wanted to see him win. When he kept on hitting those stumps... Everyone was booing him. And cheering very loudly when The Fiend was kicking out. But by the end of the show, everyone was being booed because they just became proxies for WWE management and booking decisions. So everyone booed Seth, everyone booed Bray. So sorry, we didn't actually finish. There was the referee stoppage. The cage started to come up. Medics ran in to help The Fiend, which is a ridiculous concept in itself. (laughs) That's... (laughs) That was when I started to laugh. Mm. <laughs> when medics got in the ring to help the fiend because he'd been beaten up too much. I was like, and someone asked for it earlier, this company. Yeah. And then the fiend sits up out of all of these weapons, throws around a few officials, gets Seth, starts beating up Seth, hits a sister Abigail on the exposed Ooh. concrete outside. The crowd are hating this. We start the match, they were chanting, yeah. because Fiend's fine now. Yep. And then uh, so, like he hit the ma- did the mandible claw, bleeding from the mouth. There was a blood capsule involved. Did Sister Abigail onto concrete. Yeah. And then the final visual of the pay-per-view was Fiend at the top of the ramp with the, the strobe lighting and everyone booing him. And they, I know they were more booing the situation, but they're also booing the Fiend because the Fiend didn't get it done. Uh, that These... These things do trickle down to the characters. This was an epic fail. Mm. I know epic fail is not really an in vogue term to use because it's not 2005 anymore. But this bring was it a, back. I'm going to bring it back. This was an epic fail. I Yeah, I, I, I hated this. I think everyone else has hated it. We spoke about it in a, a video that went up earlier. But I, I, I think this is a severe strategic misstep from WWE because this ill will towards their product is going to trickle down to NXT. Yeah. It's, People it, yeah. won't watch NXT because it's WWE and they'll watch AEW instead. And if you think, oh, it's just a wrestling pay-per-view, it's all about Raw and, let's be honest, more SmackDown now, it was the top story on IGN today. Yeah. that I mean, and I, I completely understand why because he is an incredibly hot act. In the same way, uh, just a few years ago, Ryback was a really hot act and they booked him in a Hell in a Cell match against CM Punk because, well, it's what the fans want, but it's not what we want. So we're just going to do this terrible finish and it completely killed all of Ryback's momentum. And you, you look at his career trajectory after that and Bray Wyatt has got a track record in WWE of starting off very hot and then just going on a big downward spiral. And it's not just that. Like last year, Braun Strowman, who might not have had the momentum of previous years, hit the finish of him versus Roman and Brock coming in and beating them both up and leaving them laying. It was Roman, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, because Roman was champion. Yeah. And then Braun just kept losing to Brock Lesnar. That that was sort of... It's like Hell in a Cell used to be where feuds go to end. Now it's where character momentum goes to end (laughs) on an (laughs) annual basis. So do you want to talk about the two theories? We sort of, we kind of, you alluded to one of them earlier, which was that it's a double turn and Seth is turning heel, the fiend is turning babyface. Because Jerry the King Lawler, Burger King Lawler was there, the babyface commentator was saying, Seth is going too far on beating up this man. Bearing in mind that Burger King just a few weeks ago was being murdered by Bray Wyatt and the fiend. So he probably really shouldn't be cheering on Bray Wyatt or like wanting to protect him. So is there a double turn in the works? I'm I'm, not, I'm just literally, I'm spitballing ideas, trying to make sense of this. Yeah. If there is, I don't, I don't know. I, de- Seth, I was thinking about this earlier in terms of Seth as a baby face, and it hasn't worked. And it never it never really worked, did it? Because he had such a flat return where he was a tweener. Yeah, they brought him back When he heel. should just be brought yeah. back as a white hot baby face. And I guess there was the Monday Night Rollins momentum for a couple of months there. But I, I had a gut feeling 
a couple of months ago when he was first put with Becky. I was like, eh, it's not really working, is it? And he just he just started to come off as not cool. And I said it at the time, but usually I don't listen to my gut feelings because I'm a man of the head. I love head. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, I'm going to listen to my head. I'm not going to listen to my heart because so many things come out in favor of the, the one upstairs. But then, like, he did the Twitter stuff. Oh, he's got a bad Twitter game. Bad Twitter game. And I think a lot of fans turned against him. And we both said at the time, like, look, I'm kind of not into Seth Rollins as an on-screen presence now after those actions. Yeah. But then he apologized and, you know, well, whatever. And you're like, okay, well, let's try and move past it. We weren't haters on Seth Rollins. But now, like, the company is not helping him as a babyface by booking this match and this finish which was almost designed to get people to hate Rollins. And I genuinely think in WWE's heads, they think it's a great baby face overcoming the odds story. Oh, completely it is, yeah. It's it's Roman all over again. It's booking Roman. Do you remember the, the, the finale of the Royal Rumble where he won and the crowd really didn't want him to mm. win, but he was overcoming the giants and the foreigners and, and all this sort of stuff. Backstage, they're like, oh, this is brilliant. What a way to get Roman Reigns over. Hi, Pete. Chopper Hi. Pete's here. Chopper Pete. Hi. I didn't even know Chopper Pete was in today. Yeah. It's for the screen stalker live oh, later. Right. I'm still angry. <laughs> Pete's still just angry. come in to shout that he's still angry. Um, so, I forgot what I said. Yeah, so, like, so the Roman thing there was just like, oh, we're doing this brilliant baby face build. I think the same thing here. It's like, oh, my God. Can you believe Seth Rollins managed to survive The Fiend? He's the first man to really put The Fiend down. Because The Fiend was incapacitated by the end of this match. So much so, the referee had to stop the match. So for all those people saying that, oh, it really protected Bray, it really didn't. If anything, it made him look worse. Mm. It made him look really, really bad. And in the process of doing all that, they also booked him too strong. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> you, I just don't know how you managed to screw up on so many levels that are actually diametrically the opposite. It's incredible, really. It's actually, it's impressive. Because, really. yeah, it's a feat. Well done. <laughs> well done. Because not only did you have this lame, 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 lame finish, you also had, like we said, 11 finishes. Chair shots to the head. Ladder shots. Ladder shots. Boxes. The pedigree that we didn't mention. Yeah. And you, you've got all those things. And... Sometimes multiple finishes work. And, and Meltzer said it on his review today. You go by what the crowd say, like how they react. And when you do finisher, kick out, finisher, kick out, Cena or AJ Styles at Royal Rumble 2016 is sort of the one I always mm-hmm. bring to mind when I think of it. Yeah, yeah. That worked because the crowd was so into it. And I think there is a match out there where Seth hits four or five curb stomps and The Fiend gets up after one on each time. Yeah. But then The Fiend takes him out. I think that could have been a good match. And I quite liked, minus the red light, give me the red light. <laughs> I quite liked the match until the yeah, end. Actually, I, I, there was actually quite a lot of this match that I really enjoyed mm. until the finish. And the finishes completely took me out of everything. Um, but so, Sorry, but yeah, the, the, yeah, the yeah. multiple finishes, when you get past five and it just became just ridiculous... The crowd were booing. The crowd were booing all, always because they didn't want Seth to to win. But then they started to like get indifferent, and that's the worst reaction you can have for a wrestling show. I think that the crowd started booing more and more and more because they all started to say, "Realize, Fiend's not winning here. Fiend is not winning the title. We're going to get mm. either Seth is going to win or we're going to get a terrible finish." So um, the other theory I wanted to pose to you, which I haven't talked with you about yet, yeah. is that. They booked this match originally with the idea being that Fiend is going to win the title. We're going to put the we're going to put the Universal Championship on the Fiend. Yep. He's going to beat Rollins, and that's the direction we're going in. But what if Fox said we want the Fiend, and so he's going over to SmackDown next Friday? In which case, you can't put the Universal Championship on him. So they had to do this finish in order to not put the title on him so he can go to SmackDown next week. Well, the there were reports. WrestleVotes did say that Fox really want The Fiend. He's the hottest thing in the company at the moment. Uh, and the, the problem we had on SmackDown was introducing all of the characters to this new audience as if he was going to be a recurring character on the show. It's not out the realms of possibility. Uh, I just think, though, you have... You have Fiend win still. <laughs> yeah. I know you, you're like stuck, aren't you? Because Brock's in the Kane stuff. That, to be, that doesn't need to be for the title, though. No. 
I take the title off, looking at the company, put the title on Fiend, get the title off Brock, Kane can cost him that match, put the title on someone else, and they go to Raw. I mean, I don't even know anymore. Like, I, I don't know where we're going at this point. There is, there is no acceptable outcome because other than the Fiend has the Universal title by the end of that night. Because he looks rubbish now. Like, they've killed, like, this pay-per-view really felt like it killed all of the Fiend's momentum. Because he's lost now. Mm. And he was completely laid out and decimated. I don't care that he got back up and put Seth, you know, on the floor with Sister Abigail and made him bleed from the mouth. You were lying on the floor, prone, for a long-ass time. It felt like Seth could have pinned you multiple times over at certain points in the match. It didn't work. Mm. Whatever they were trying to do here, for me, it absolutely did not work. No, and it's, it's profoundly depressing as, as a wrestling fan. Like, yeah. I, I was so into this. I was so into The Fiend's character. And, like, I, and I think we all thought, this is the one that WWE are going to go with because they gave that they've obviously given him so much creative freedom. And now I just feel like a total schmuck. Oh yeah, completely. Like I, I feel personally offended. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just such a ridiculous thing to feel like WWE and that like, a, like a sort of entire, if someone said that out loud, I'd be like, oh, shut up. <laughs> but I really do feel like I've been made a total fool of for having the gall to invest in this super cool character. I highly recommend everyone uh, on the YouTubes look for Brian Alvarez's t near 10 minute rant that he had on Wrestling Observer Live yesterday, just b actually before Hell in a Cell started, where he went on this 10 minute rant about how WWE hates its audience and treats them like stupid idiot marks and just expects us to all just tune in the following day. And it really doesn't matter mm. what they do. The other thing to suppose we can end on this is because Seth Rollins is still Universal Champion, Brock Lesnar will likely still be WWE Champion by the time it rolls around. Seth Brock for a third time this year at Survivor Series. If we go with that theme. If we go with that theme. Right, well, let's see what you think on the s -s 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 Super Chats. Lady Lou, the mod mother, has been getting them together. Indeed. Wilson Simon says, I can't describe how pissed off I am. Seth should ask for his release and go to AEW. He's going to get Roman WrestleMania 32 heat tonight. Uh, well, Seth's the true company man in all of this. Yeah, I think Seth... That there are videos that we've watched uh, that have been shared on Twitter where Seth's walking out and he seems angry at the fans... For booing him. It's, like, yeah. What the hell are you expecting? Well, it's the Paige thing all over. Remember Paige saying, like, well, the reason why women's wrestling was uh, booked the way it was in WWE was because of the fans. Mm. It's I, I think that sometimes people can just get too company-minded and they do think that it's the fans' fault that uh, things aren't being booked right. Yeah, Tim Arndt says, how will next year's Hell in a Cell match end? With another no contest. Well, we've had a DQ. We've had a ref stoppage. No, last year wasn't a DQ. That was also no, that was a no contest last year. No contest. Brock, did, Brock got in and he laid out both Roman and Braun and it was a no contest. We've had a no contest, a ref stoppage. It just seems to be that the main event of Hell in a Cell matches aren't allowed finishes. I think it's going to be like someone doesn't let go of the ropes. <laughs> well, that... Oh, that was the cage match, wasn't it? The Shane McMahon cage match. Uh, James Kraus, it's Hell in a Cell! How do you have a DQ finish? It wasn't a DQ finish, but that doesn't make it any less infuriating. It's a ref stoppage, which I actually think is worse. Mm. I, I do think that a ref stoppage is way worse than the DQ finish. Just considering what's happened in the Hell in a Cell stipulation history and how none of those matches it's were ended. Hell in a Cell, like the opening video package to this pay-per-view was just like oh, it's the most demonic structure it's where careers go to die apparently not a ref could have stopped it at any point at any point in history uh, bradley fetzer says if the ref stopped the match can't they just resume the match as like it was gonna pause and kind of like in an mma bout in between rounds so you could break get a ref and resume the match like 24 7 stuff that is the comment of someone grasping. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still good. Like, maybe we could rescue this and, and put it back together. Unfortunately not, Bradley. Uh, Aaron Smith, solution would be not to have Seth versus Bray for the title so Bray could have won. Need a break from WWE after the terrible booking lately. Looking forward to AEW Dynamite and NWA Power this week instead. Yeah, a a NWA debuts tomorrow night, I believe. Mm. Oh, on Tuesdays. Yeah. Head to head with Impact. Oh, yeah. The Tuesday Night Wars. Billy Corkin is going after yeah. Impact, his old employers. Uh, Valaba Mami Dipudi 
says the only thing defensible about the main event is that the fiend kicked out at one will put over anyone who gets a two count over pretty hard. But yeah, it sucks that this overshadows Becky versus Sasha. There was a two count in there. There was a two count in there. So, yeah. and he was completely laid out. Uh, Timothy BT Fury knocks out the fiend tonight with one punch. <laughs> That'll put him in his place. That's, that'll teach you for getting over. Lee Spicer, that was pure bull S-word. I'm sickened. I Thank think, you very much for censoring. I think this is... Um, I, I'm always worried whenever we are very, very negative on a show, particularly over the, over the weekend, there's been a big sort of debate about our uh, wrestle talk to anti-WWE. So I was a bit trepidatious about coming into this show to be like, well, that was a terrible finish. It was the worst main event finisher of, you know, for quite some time. I, I feel like we're being vindicated by the comments are also being like, yeah, no, it was bad. Yeah, I feel like we get to say, I told you so. <laughs> uh, just do a few more of these. Eric Enigma, they need to apologize to Bray for that BS booking. No, it's a good S word. I, 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 poor Bray. I know. Like, he can't be thinking that that was a good idea. But they've given him so much creative freedom up until this point. I, Oh, it gets awful. Steve Wynyard, is there any hope for The Fiend or is the character R.I.P.? I don't know if any character is ever completely done after one loss, but it does really kill momentum. The shine is, the shine's is gone. considerably off. Yeah, and just think, two months ago. Yeah, like going into this pay-per-view, I would have, I legit would say The Fiend is 100% hot. Yeah. We're, we're talking about the hottest thing in wrestling at the moment. And now... 32%. Mm. Put him down. If he was a stock, I'd say sell. <laughs> and finally, Godzilla0518. Great Am name. I the only one who actually liked the ending? Going by... Crying with laughter emoji. Is he trolling? I don't know. Going by the comments we've had thus far, yeah, I think you might be the only one who liked that ending. Yeah. Well, you know, good for you, Godzilla. <laughs> Right, so before we get on with the full play-by-play, -play, let's have a look at the current Wrestle League standings. Oh, yeah. yes, because there was a big update on the Wrestle League standings, which Laurie Blake was very unhappy about, because <laughs> you may recall, I think it was on last Monday's show? Yeah. Literally, it's less than seven days later, Ollie Davis made a bet that... Lacey and Natalia would never have another... Would not have a match within the next six weeks because as Vic Joseph falsely said <laughs> that's their feud that's a stamp to their feud at the end of their feud yeah you said their feud is over and I said that feud is still going on because they haven't finished up the sharpshooter thing yet I thought draft I thought season premieres I thought that was wrapped up and we're just going to move on it was a good mid card feud while it lasted I bet you they have another match tonight they are are they? Oh, of course they have the last woman standing match Sorry, yeah, I actually genuinely forgot about that, but yes, you are I'm right. I'm more then. wrong than I, I <laughs> thought I would be. So you bet me two of your Wrestle League points, and I took that bet. So it's not just that Luke gets two more points. Two are taken away from me. Yeah. Otherwise, that would have been unfair. That's why been. Laurie can't <laughs> say anything. So uh, these are the in-office Wrestle League standings. Of course, Wrestle League is our fantasy booking predictions league where we total up all the the, the pay-per-view predictions over the course of a quarter, really. You mm -hmm. know, SummerSlam to Survivor Series, Survivor Series to Royal Rumble. Uh, and it's for our pledge hammers, $5 and above. So just us in the office. Uh, Pete is at the bottom with 25. Oh, Pete. I'm now second from bottom with 27 because of what happened. Uh, but then it's it's pretty close. Randy next at 28. Luke in second place now with 29. Uh, it's, don't call it a comeback. I was bottom of the league. I would have been one point <laughs> off of Laurie if it weren't for this. And Laurie's at, in top place, consistently outperforming all of us. 32 points. Well done. Well done to him. Uh, now, the Predictions League only had four possible or five things wasn't Five, it yeah because we had four we had four matches in the bonus question yeah which was will the undertaker show up he nope, didn't absolutely not good <laughs> but that would have been better than <laughs> the, the finish we did get hmm. um but these people astoundingly managed to get zero points yeah nil point mk ultra rob ruse rob rose sorry mike Tomah hawkins mike gear and tyler bailey so congratulations <laughs> to you on getting nil point you're not very good <laughs> 
Oh, but this is what it's all about. That's the Wrestle League trophy emoji trophy. Uh, and I also want to give a shout out to Christopher Jenkins, who had a support Wrestle Talk sign um, that he sent some. He had it in the uh, in the show, and then sent me some emails, uh, going oh, to, scrubbing great. through the pay per view and screen capping uh, where you can see the sign. Because I didn't spot it during the actual broadcast. But thank you for Chris for sending those emails to us. The uh, Pledge Hammer Man himself. Ah, Leroy Jenkins. Indeed, Infinite Crisis. Uh, so let's get on to our full play by play. Remember. Go and subscribe to Screen Stalk right now and also have that video open in a separate window. Andy, could you put the video link in the chats so people could open it up? We'll be going live in an hour, uh, in an hour from now, actually, on Screen Stalker, where Laurie and Simon are going to be rounding up all the news from movies and video games. And then we're all going to play WWE 2K19 as a large extended therapy process to deal with what happened last night. And we're going to have Bray Wyatt beat yeah. Seth Rollins. Okay. Unless Laurie is playing with Seth Rollins, in which case Maybe that's the game, losing. is that he has to play as Seth and we have to try and, yeah, we have we to have to try and beat Laurie. Like a gauntlet. Yeah. <laughs> a Hell in a Cell gauntlet match. Uh, right. And, and also, there's been some weird things around the studio recently. Yeah, there was something particularly strange about the review the review and and when we did the unboxing we didn't see it at the time because all the lights cut out but watching the video back there's this guy who keeps on like trying to invade the videos in the review video that went up of hell in a cell with laurie and pete that gets hacked at the end and yeah. it's like this guy called dave so just be on the lookout folks watch out Randy. pretty creepy um, so we got the Hell in a Cell stipulation video package, which you have already talked about. I quite liked it. I did as well. Like it was almost like twenty years ago, a monster was created, and now it's back. Yeah, and it will claim four more victims tonight. And then I've written here they went Schindler's List <laughs> because the cage is red. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. whoa, 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 whoa! The cage is red, but everything else is black and white. Yeah. And that's a famous shot at the end of the black and white movie, Schindler's List. Yeah. Not really a spoiler. <laughs> uh, and then, boom, Pyro. Oh. Love Pyro. Big Pyro gave this a big feel. Very, I, as soon as the Pyro went off, I was like, oh, I did miss Pyro. Yeah. I didn't think I'd really missed it on pay-per-views, but yeah, I did miss it. Yeah, because when people talk about Pyro, I'm like, God, it's not all about big bangs and crashes. It totally is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, There's no. you don't need substance. You no. just need spot, 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 spot. <laughs> uh, and also, this is a slightly different set as well. This is our first look at the pay-per-view set, I suppose. You've yeah. got the Raw set, which is new, and the SmackDown set. Was it just the... I just thought it was the old set. I didn't really notice it, to be honest. Yeah, well, it was It was kind of... I think it's going to be generic WWE pay-per-view set. Okay. I, it could have been the old one, but slightly tweaked. Okay. So that's, that's uh, what we've got. Uh, the f and it kicked off with arguably the second biggest match of the night yes. behind the Fiend Rollins, which was Sasha versus Becky. A lot of people have been like, well, why would you put this on first? I totally agree with it because I wouldn't want two Hell in a Cell matches back to back. They always do this. If there's two yeah. Hell in a Cell matches, one opens, the other one closes, and then the rest of the match is kind of like ideal buffer. So you don't have two back to back or two close to each other. Yeah. I think it's a smart thing to do. Yeah, and it's a hot opener. Yeah, I, I think this was a this was the right positioning Completely, for this, yeah. uh, especially with Fiend Rollins. Like that should be the main event, mm -hmm. uh, even though that finish <laughs> do you know what when this opened as well when this was the opener i in my head i was like fiend's definitely winning then because mm. they're not going to win the show on a disaster yeah uh, little did you know little did i know so this was a really like sort of innovative match i yeah. really liked it so, uh, sasha attacks becky right from the get-go as the the cage is still lowering they they brawl outside uh sasha gets back in then becky gets the chain off of the cell door and then she uses that to punch Sasha. Yeah. There was just loads of little cool bits that I haven't really seen before in matches. There was a lot of stuff in this match that mm. was like very unique to, the, to a Hell in a Cell match before. There was a spot where they had a chair that was kind of like suspended in the corner of the cell. And they like used kendo sticks to kind of prop it up. 
And Becky sat Sasha Banks in the suspended chair and then did a drop kick off the apron into it. I was like, that's that's really inventive. Yeah. It's quite, it's really cool. It doesn't make a lick of sense oh, when you think about it. No. But, but it was a cool visual. I don't care. I really liked it. If we're talking video game matches, yeah. I'm going to try and do that. Yeah. You know, like if, if I could, I'd try and wedge something in and then pile on top of it and then do a move on it. Meteora into like onto Becky into the ladder. Yeah, that was yeah. really nice as well. It was just, it was good, like... Yeah, just really good spot fest stuff in the best kind of way. Yeah, uh, the, I thought that the finish came off a bit out of nowhere. Yeah. Because Sasha starts chucking on all these chairs and she's wailing on Becky underneath all these chairs. She gets up to do, I guess, another Meteora. But then Becky just gets up, throws her into, Bexplode her into the chairs and yep. taps her out with this armor. That's right, yeah. She did the back spider off the, ro- off the like, middle rope onto the chairs. And then, yeah, immediately taps her out with the disarmor. And then Sasha effectively cries mm. because she lost, which would be mirrored later on in the night in the Charlotte Bailey match. And Temper tantrum. <laughs> well, I mean, these two have been booked to be proper losers. Yeah. Since, since Banks' three-week push ended, she has been made to look like a complete loser. And that's my problem with this match. Well, a lot of people are saying it's... You know, great match. And it, it really was a fun, fun spot fest. There was no substance there. And there was very little sort of heat between the two. There was definitely heat for the action and them wrestling from the crowd, from me and, you know, the live audience. But in terms of actual blood rivalry between Becky and Sasha, I just never bought it. That's because Banks has been beaten yeah. all the time. Since she's come back, she's, all she's been done has been beaten. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's not been... been a well-booked feud, and Sasha hasn't been a well-booked contender. No. Uh, yeah, so I I can totally see why people love this match and all the power to them. But for me, this was just, you know, it, it, it lacked the depth that really gets me into these sorts of things. No, I completely agree with you. And you've got to ask the question now where you go with Banks and spoilers, Bailey as well. Yeah. I mean, I've written my notes back to NXT. Well, I, who knows that Banks has actually re-signed? I know there's been reports, but um, actually those reports came out when she started to get buried. <laughs> like when the, the booking sort of went yeah. amiss. Buried, buried is strong, but yes, yeah, sorry, bu- sorry, bu- yeah. booked poorly, yeah. I would certainly say. Uh, after this, a match place, and I do disagree with, this should have been the semi-main, Yeah, was Rowan and... Luke Harper, God, it's so difficult to say Rowan and Roman in the same sentence, versus Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. This was so much fun. Mm. This was really, really fun. It was tornado rules as well, so it was just chaotic from the start. Slow down a little bit when the heels were just working over Bryan for, for quite some time, but it crescendoed nicely into the finish where the, the good guy stood tall. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think making it a tornado tag was a stroke of genius. Oh, absolutely. It sort of fits within that Hell in a Cell theme, you know, it's a, something a bit different to your usual tag match. Smoking and it, mirrors. Yeah, and it allows the Bludgeon Brothers to just run around and throw themselves into people, literally. One of my favourite moments of this match was just like a really lovely bit of character work from Rowan, where he grabs a pencil from the announcer's mm. desk and he goes up to the camera and he snaps it. Yeah. And like pointing <laughs> at Daniel Bryan, we're like, this is what he's going to be. And then I think it was either, uh, whoever, it might have been Michael Collar, Corey Graves, when, I wonder if that's symbolic. <laughs> like, yeah, I think it was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it was. I, I wonder if that was improv. I, I think it was improv. That's really cool. I thought it was really, really nice. Um, I, I've missed seeing Luke Harper in the ring as well. Mm, really, so really like Luke Harper. I mean, he was there to eat the pin, but... His facials oh, are amazing. His dead-eyed stare, mm. his 100-yard stare, where he's just, just looking off into the middle distance, just you can hear the cogs turning as he's thinking of his next move, but he's not doing any facial reaction for it. I love it so much. Or he was concussed. <laughs> That's a joke. I don't think he was. He dived out the ring... Um, I think it was onto Roman, got a a whiff of Roman's wet hair. And that's only going to speed you up because that that makes you less frictiony. And he goes, like his head looks like it goes straight into the corner of the announcer's desk. he's grabbing his eye and he was proper selling it. He was yelling. But then he was totally fine. fine. Yeah, Brian Alvarez, who, who was very good at picking up on the actual wrestling specifics of things, reckons he never actually hit the corner of the desk but realised how it must have looked mm. and started selling it. 
That's yeah. why he was totally fine afterwards. Didn't like have. I mean, if it did connect, he would have a, a bruise. Absolutely, yeah. So that's you know what what a what a wrestler Luke Harper is. I thought it was really really cool. Um, they tried to power bomb Brian through the uh, announcers' mm. table, but he hurricane runners Harper off the. Um, off the table and then Roman just dives out of nowhere and he spears Rowan through another table lovely lovely chaotic stuff yeah and then we got what was a, a sort of tantalising glimpse into an alternate reality where it was Luke Harper and Daniel Bryan just for a bit in the ring yeah and they were they were just working really nicely together and I thought man if it was Harper who was Bryan's second all this time and it was Harper who turned and Rowan has been fantastic but I'm still more of a Harper guy. Same and there here. was just something between them in the ring when they were wrestling. It was just like, man, I wish this was the feud. I wish this was the feud. And as you mentioned earlier, you're not sure if Sasha has re-signed <laughs> based on the way that she's been booked. And apparently the rumors are that Luke Harper's not re-signed despite being back on TV. And yeah, he was there to eat the pin. He ate the pin strongly, though. Superman punch. Running knee spear. Oh, yeah. Like, that's... No, no, no. Not saying. Yeah, yeah. Not saying, but they... Didn't want the Bludgeon Brothers to win, and they didn't want to pin Rowan. Referee stoppage. <laughs> well, I mean, you didn't want to do too many of them because there's another DQ halfway through the show. Yeah. Yeah, actually, when that DQ happened, I thought, but well, they're not doing a DQ in the yeah, main yeah, event. Yeah. Why would you? I, well, I never thought they would after well, last year. It was that stupid Twitter poll, wasn't there? Oh, I didn't see that until afterwards. Um, so, sorry, the Twitter poll because we haven't talked about it on this show. WWE asked everyone on Twitter over the weekend, how do you think the main event's going to finish? Is The Fiend going to win? Is Seth Rollins going to win? Or is it going to be a DQ? You know, damn it. The, the answer was none of the above. Yeah. Uh, no, we've got, or yeah, <laughs> other, we've got a worse idea. And uh, then after the match, um, Brian like offered out a handshake and then Roman went to go do it, but Brian took his hand down and instead threw his arms out for the hug. And they embrace in the ring. Lovely little moment. All the while, I was thinking, like, he's going to turn heel again. Mm. He's going to turn heel again. But he didn't. It was just a nice moment, and it's great having babyface Brian back. Yes. It's a shame, though, that he was never really given a proper run as a heel or I mean, a he babyface. Was, he, was <laughs> he was WWE champion. Yeah, but it was sort of lost in the mix, wasn't it? It was only for a month or two. As, oh, well, no, it was back from Survivor Series yeah, last year. Yeah, Survivor Series through to Mania. Well, I guess so. It's a whole year. I don't know. I just, a whole year? Almost a whole year. What? For, yeah, it, ten? It, no, 11 months. From Survivor Series through to Mania. Oh, yeah, that's when he lost it. <laughs> no, I'm talking about his heel run. Oh, if his this heel was run. The yeah, end right, the heel. okay, I see what you're saying. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, yeah I maybe that's the mark of a good character, though. You don't feel like you got, you, you're you left wanting more. Yeah. But I was left wanting a lot more. Mm. So... Yeah, maybe, but, but Brian's great. So. Maybe it's because the storyline leading into this match has been a complete that could also be bodge it, yeah. job. Bodge job. Uh, then we have Charlie Caruso talking to Seth Rollins backstage about The Fiend. He's slayed monsters. He's slayed beasts. He's a crappy promo. <laughs> God, I do not like Seth. Seth Rollins is not cool, <laughs> as that guy's sign said. Don't do that. He'll stare at you really angrily. It's bad booking, man. <laughs> What did you say? What did you say? I just said it's bad booking. It's bad man. booking. <laughs> and it's true. Also, you've got a terrible Twitter game. Uh, and then he says, I'm going to burn it down. It was a rubbish promo. Then he walks off and he comes back. And he goes, well, at least I hope so. <laughs> Which was actually good, but I still hate it. Uh, 2K20 advert, but slightly different. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It oh, was, is this the one where they, yeah. they, all the guys are saying, I thought this would been. I thought this was there before. Oh, I've not seen this one. So yeah. Stone Cold and Hulk Hogan. Uh, talking. Hopefully, there were no recording devices <laughs> <laughs> by the beer, by the bar, and they're going. Oh, it's really good to see women getting to be the man. Well, there's no doubt about who the man was in my day, and of course, there's tension between the two. But then Sting's next to Hulk and goes, "No, you're right." And then Bret Hart on the other side, and then Shawn Michaels. Yeah, I want a version of that advert where it's just loads of people. Yeah, but then really Triple H walks in, be like, "But we all know it's me." Yeah. Right? It was a very cool visual to see those five guys stand yeah. there. Uh, Crown Jewel promo, then Randy Orton versus Ali. Yeah, so this was made on the pre-show. Proper SmackDown feel to this. I did like the spot at the end, though, when um, Ali blocked the RKO by effectively yes. doing a handstand. Mm. That was really nice. And then he tried to do the, his little roll-through face buster thing, but got caught by an RKO for the Randy win. A fine match. Yeah, it did just had no heat because there was no real story here. And that's a shame because 
there actually is. Randy Orton gave Ali the concussion that ruled him out of the Kofi spot going against Brian at Mania. But I think we've already wrapped that up because I think they've already done this on an episode of SmackDown. Yeah, but I feel like you could have... Oh, you could have... Oh, yeah, don't, don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah. You could have done way more with it. That, that I, was more to, to, to feed into Randy's feud with Kofi, though. I feel like Ali and Randy could have a proper feud by themselves. And is the revival thing over now? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess well, so. They haven't re-signed, obviously. <laughs> it's by the bad. Yeah. It's still the tag champs. Well, yeah, <laughs> well, that's the, that's the, the mark of... These these people haven't signed. Yeah, and I'm the tag champs. also guessing that he's no longer feuding with Shinsuke Nakamura. They've dropped it twice. Yeah, I should have put the bet on that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's it. Was what it was. It was an episode of SmackDown, and I'm talking USA SmackDown, not even Fox. Oh, Smackdown. totally USA SmackDown. Now, next up, I really like the Brian tag match, but I was really surprised how much I loved this. Really? Yeah. A match out of nowhere for the women's tag titles, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross versus the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane. Andy shot me a death stare there when I said I like this match. <laughs> I, like I, I've written here as if this didn't feel TV enough. Here's a women's tag title match. But, uh, you know, from the get-go, Asuka and Kairi Sane felt like they had a swagger about them. Paige wasn't with them, so maybe that really has been dropped. And they come down, and they work heel. Yeah, they worked heel throughout the match, yeah. And Asuka was so good in the ring. Th- that's what, I, I haven't got a lot of notes for this match. My first note, though, was like, God, I hope the draft splits this team mm. up. So <laughs> did, I, I failed on that, that he, regard there, and I don't think I'm going to get that wish. And Bliss and Cross were apparently did a promo saying they wondered what the Kabuki Warriors have done to earn this title shot, which is an excellent question. But my other notes are just like, God, oh, Asuka's so good. Mm. She is awesome and the commentators were really putting her over strong being like she you know she's a former royal rumble winner she was nxt champion for for 500 days she did this she did this she went on this huge winning streak she's just missing something now but she needs to kind of find that killer edge again and i was like yeah what she needs is someone in creative who actually wants to push her and and she did work heel yeah slightly heel and Sane sort of did as well. Like when she did her stomp to the corner before the elbow, she kind of like slaps uh, Bliss across the face yeah. or cross across the face before doing the move. It's nice, some nice little character touches in there. Well, the, the big thing is that the finish of the match yeah. was uh, like the crowd were really, really into Asuka and Sane. Just and like they didn't care that they were working heel. Apparently Bliss was a heel on the pre-show. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> in the same night. Yeah. It's different continuity, the pre-show and the, the main card. Well, that makes sense then, because someone sent me a tweet saying, like, um, uh, Bliss and Cross were heels the, uh, tonight if, you weren't keeping, if you're keeping track. And I was like, they were definitely baby-faced mm. in the match. But where this gets really interesting is Asuka hit the green mist yeah. on, was it Cross? Uh, I believe, yes, it was on Cross, yeah. yeah. Behind the referee's back. And, like, I don't, I'm not a fan of the green mist or any of that stupid stuff. And I, it feels I, a bit stereotypical. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah, you're right there. I just think it it looks goofy as well because how do you really get around it? It's like, have you been eating in the cookie jar? And the kid's got all the chocolate around the mouth. No. Because the ref turns around to get the because Asuka spits the green mist and then kicks uh, Cross in the face. And then the referee turns around. There's green everywhere. Like Asuka's got green all down her face and like on down her body. Cross has got green all over her face. There's green all over the mat. And he's like, what happened? Oh, well, count the pin. Yeah. <laughs> you moron. WWE do such a good job of protecting their referees. But he turns around here and goes, well, I can't see anything. <laughs> the ordinary here. Well done, Asuka. One, two, three, you win. I guess you won then. But yeah, Asuka and Sane are the, the women's tag team champions. If there's going to be a feud against Bailey and Sasha Banks, it's actually quite exciting. And I, I, I don't know. I, even though the Green Mist, the Green Mist stuff was hokey, I really ended up being into Asuka and Sane. I just, I want to see them as singles runs because this yeah. women's tag division is a dead division. So it just kind of sucks that they're stuck there. Or and maybe they could be the ones to properly rejuvenate oh, it. Yeah, well, I know. I, f- I feel like that's a lost cause at this point. I'm, um, try- I'm trying to have some hope. <laughs> Um, and they did stress on commentary as well that even though the draft is coming, the women's tag titles will still be defended across both brands. So it's no longer defended on NXT like it was originally mm. announced it was going to be. 
Uh, then we got the OC versus the Viking Raiders and a mystery partner in a six man who I think we all thought was going to be Cedric Alexander. We were talking about it on our little WhatsApp thread. Team content, Team content. multiple emojis. And it was Braun Strowman. Yeah. Because this was all really a segment to build the raw angle with Tyson Fury. Yes, yeah, so remember that SmackDown eight man where there were eight men in the ring, but really you only needed to have Braun Strowman there. Mm. Well, this was a six man, but it was only really to have Braun Strowman there and put him over uh, strong. I think is this the Viking Raiders pay per view debut? Oh my god! <laughs> it may, yeah, sure, it might be. And I think um, Sean Ross Sapp said that they're currently five and zero against the OC. Mm. This will make it six and zero. <laughs> This, this feud must continue. <laughs> uh, the I actually quite liked AJ and Braun's interaction. I, I found myself quite wanting to see a Strowman Styles feud. We just had that recently over the US title. Did we? Yeah. It was the main event of Raw for like two weeks or so. Yeah. How did they get it? Yeah, and it was quite good. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I it was a bad thing. I completely forgot that happened. Yeah. Yeah, but never really had like a definitive finish. Did it? I can't remember. Because Strowman didn't win the title. <laughs> and they never actually properly beat him. Uh, but yeah, so AJ went for... Oh yeah, it, here's the the real bad uh, of this all. But OC just start attacking Braun and the referee calls off the match as a DQ. Absolutely awful, awful finish. And it wasn't even a big beat down. It was nothing... You know, like six mans. We've all seen six mans near the end and everyone's hitting their moves on everyone. It was that. It was less chaotic than the eight man that was on SmackDown. <laughs> and, yeah, so the referee calls it out. The, the crowd fell completely flat. It was a really awful finish. And then they do a little bit of scuffles afterwards where AJ goes for a phenomenal forearm, but Braun punches him out of midair as Styles comes down, obviously to build the Tyson Fury stuff. Tyson Fury, if you haven't seen it, is an English boxer. He's a very, very fantastic boxer. Proper heavyweight guy. He's a couple of inches taller than Strowman. And they're going to have a segment on Raw tonight. You say obviously, but uh, Burger King Laura said, oh, he's not finished with him yet. After he like punched him and looked down at him, he's like, he's like oh, he's getting ready for another move. <laughs> I, was like, nope, I think he's done the punch there, Jerry, to yeah. sell the Fury thing. Um, so I learned over the weekend, Fury's an English guy. Yeah. I genuinely just assumed he was an American. Oh, no, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, honestly, he'll have a crack. If he's unscripted... He'll have a, and even if he is scripted, he'll have a cracking promo tonight. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll play the You think it's going to be Fury against Strowman at Crown Jewel? Oh, yeah. yeah Fury yeah. versus Strowman at Crown Jewel is, is the plan. Is, apparently so, yeah. It's, uh, I, I made the prediction it was going to be a boxing match. Yeah. They're going to do a works boxing match. Oh. But, but anyway, the, the, the Fury finish. promo should be really good. But what I did like about yeah, this yeah, yeah. was AJ's comedy selling after the match because he was selling that he got knocked out. He got, he got up and he was like, where am I? Where, and then we're like, we're in Sacramento. He's like, oh, am I the champion? Like, <laughs> you're the champion. Where are we? What day is it? Sunday. Yeah. And he's like, okay, good. I'm fine. I'm fine. And we're trying to set up. And then we just fall back down again. And he had to be carried out by three other guys. It was very, very funny comedy selling. He was properly holding on to the ref yeah. on the way up the ramp. Like he, he, and I love it when wrestlers do that. Because like, you think of wrestlers as these very egotistical, narcissistic personas. But he, he gave everything to look stupid. It was and really all funny. all for people... Loving, look, looking stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and at the top of the ramp as well, he's like, no, get off of me. I'm going to hold up the title. Holds up the title. Second late. <laughs> Stumbles back. backwards. <laughs> really good. Uh, then we got the Street Profits doing their usual shtick when Tamina ran in <coughs> with Carmella. There was a schmoz. Tamina ended up the 24-7 champion. She stared at Tyler Breeze, who was there without Fandango and in a suit who seemed to be coming on to her, she punched him and ran away. And then Truth says, which way did they go? And Dawkins and Ford pointed in different directions. And Truth said, we'll take the stairs. I'll go upstairs, you go downstairs. And Carmella said, there's no stairs here. And then later on, there was a bit when Baron Corbin beat Chad Gable into a stairwell. And I'm like, there are stairs here. <laughs> yeah, this was... Uh... Well, I, I'm, I'm over the 24-7 stuff. Oh, I was way past if, it. If you enjoy it, well, you know, you're probably an idiot. <laughs> Chad, Chad, Chad Gable took on Baron Corbin next, uh, oh which was, I, I know that this, this feud was kind of finished up, and really if they were going to have this match on pay-per-view, they should have 
They should have just announced it. Or given it some other modicum yeah. of build, yeah. yeah. But I wasn't against seeing them here. I was right. actually quite excited because I really enjoyed their stuff. They and did we've King been saying the they want to see it on pay-per-view because obviously on TV you get the ad breaks in there to kind of like break up the flow mm. of the action. So I was looking for this to be um, almost like not a blow, actually yeah, a bit of a blow off yeah. to the feud and Chad to get his big win mm. over Baron Corbin as we would later learn that this feud must continue um, because Baron Corbin opened it finally announcing the Shorty G uh, name which was trademarked months ago and we all said well that's for Chad Gable then because he's been given the short gimmick but now we're finally here he's Shorty Gable and Greg Hamilton introduced him as such at the end of the match said here is your winner Shorty Gable and later um, when Kayla was interviewing him she called him Shorty as well and he owned it he said yeah call me Shorty Gable so that's his new name now he's and, Shorty Gable and Corey Graves called him Shorty Throughout all the, match. the way through the match and Cole would say don't uh, disrespect him. Chad. Uh, the commentary, by the way, both teams were goddamn awful the whole night. I thought Lawler's commentary on the Fiend's entrance was terrible. I'm going to give a shout out to Dio Madden, though, because he had a Sonic the Hedgehog reference during that six man tag. Oh, so all is forgiven. So he's my new favorite commentator. Um, so this was a this was a, a decent match. Like I I enjoyed it uh, because I, I'm really into Chad and Corbin. Uh, but it was the least good of their three matches they've had so far. Yeah, the crowd weren't as hot for it as they have been for previous encounters between them. <clears throat> well, why would they be? I just that, like everyone feels like this match is finished, like yeah. this feud's finished, and then yeah, it just, just Gable got a roll-up pin at the end when Corbin was going to use the scepter. So there's multiple levels of oh, no, but Corbin could have had it won. So then afterwards, when Chad Gable is doing a backstage interview saying, oh, I proved to the world, I was like, well, did you, though? Yeah, no. Because that isn't a proper victory to me. That is a fluky victory that would build a, a better match. And if you win that match decisively, then you can say these things. So I just, I didn't, this wasn't good. No. This wasn't good at all. Uh, then we got Charlotte versus Bailey. Um, but... We got distracted right at the start, though, because oh, yeah. as important as this title match is, we had to do some 24-7 nonsense beforehand where Tamina's trying to hide because they did, like, the pan down the commentary, like, the, the worldwide commentary ta uh, tables. And Tamina's trying to hide. She's being traced by uh, Truth, and she uses Funaki as a shield. So Funaki and Truth did some comedy. And then Carmella super kicked Tamina and told Truth to pin her. I did like Grey saying, well, at least I can finally get some sleep tonight. Mm. Which I thought was a funny line because obviously he's dating Carmella and she can't sleep when she's got the twenty four seven title because people are always trying to break into their house. I'm guessing. But um, well, when he says sleep, he means have sex with her. Oh, consummate. Yes. Yeah, like like Drake Maverick wants yeah, to do. Finally, do that. Point of all this, Truth has the belt again. He's a twenty time champion or something. I don't think anyone cares at this point, but it's 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 you know it's there. I I don't th it, they it's not like the twenty four seven title had a shelf life because you look at the iron iron metal heavyweight championship over in ddt that's been running for over heavy a metal decade. championship yeah sorry i couldn't remember the yeah, exact yeah. ridiculous name of that title still a better title name than open the dream, dream gate though <laughs> and the that's been running for over a decade and it's still fun and occasionally it flares up in a sort of viral way but that's because they changed the champions. Yeah. That's because suddenly a ladder is the champion. Someone's pet cat. Now it's... Jack the uh, Jobber. Jack the Jobber or... or uh, oh, come on, who's the poor moustache guy? Joey Ryan. But here, it's always our truth. Yeah. So when the, the, the truth Maverick stuff was very funny, and then that stopped. And then I thought, okay, let's go a different direction now with Maria. You can get a good four months out of that. But they've just gone straight back to truth. And then so they put it on Carmella, and then they've just gone right back to truth again. So I, I'm I'm completely over this now. Yeah, and it really made the uh, following championship match feel very unspecial mm. because we had to stop this to do 24/7 stuff. Yeah, and also uh, the the crowd was split, and and the, when it was because it it's in split California. Well, yeah, so Bailey is from down the road. This was in Sacramento. She's from San Jose. And Charlotte, WWE think they can just put out there and say, you face now. <laughs> and everyone's meant to cheer her when that's, no one wants to cheer her when she's a face anyway. She is the most unlikable baby face. 
She's the Seth Rollins of the women's division. She's an unlikable babyface at this point. It's just like back in the day that they would they would get one person over to the expense of everyone you liked. But now they're not even getting the one person over. <laughs> they're just flattening out entire divisions because they're inept at wrestling storytelling. And the way that this feud has been booked, this Banks and uh, Lynch and Flair and Bailey feud has been booked, is that Lynch and Flair are stars, Banks and Bailey are rubbish, and this night completely proved that because these two have just beaten these other two, pillar to post for the entire time, <laughs> And then they just beat them again here and left them at the end of it crying. Yeah, so Charlotte, pff, I'd say, dominated 70% of the match. Not the usual amount of domination, but it was still there. Both both of them worked over each other's legs. And Charlotte made Bailey tap in the figure eight after Bailey tried to roll Charlotte up and grab the tights and put you, the feet on the, the ropes. ropes yeah. And the referee said no, none of that. Uh, so, which, which isn't protecting, especially when you tap in the finish. So Charlotte's a 10-time champ. She walks out, and Bailey kind of has a, a tantrum at ringside, kicks over some steel steps, looks like she's crying. Why does it always have to happen to me? Mm. There, I... there is something interesting about this, I think. No, I don't think there is. But <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> okay, I, I, if, if I can try and predict where they're going to go, if they're going to go anywhere, it probably should be a more intense snap. Because she, since she turned heel, she's... She's believed she's a baby face. It's just everyone else doesn't, aren't on board with her. Mm. Now I think she has to snap and go full on leather jacket heel. Ooh. Bailey Sting. <laughs> it's fine to make it happen. Or Banks and Bailey go to NXT, where they'll be happy. <clears throat> yeah. And they, I'd imagine WWE probably want some more names on the uh, the NXT show after mm. the ratings last Wednesday. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, well, that will make such a weak women's division now. Well, yeah, because you haven't built any other stars for the last two years. And you've got three sets of belts, yeah. which really, like, yeah. Uh, okay, well, you know, that that was the show. It, well, the only other thing was Chad Gable was that the promo we were talking about where he called himself Shoy G, and then Baron Corbin beat him up. So yeah. that feud must continue. So it was... It was uh, it was it's rough. It, it was a rough experience to be a WWE fan. And I know we cr criticise it a lot. But we are, at, you know, unfortunately in our core, the way we were brought up, we are WWE fans. Mm -hmm. And w I, you give a bit to them because you think they're going to do something and they get you invested. And I mean, like, I don't know if I've felt this bad about WWE since the Nexus. Whoa, and that's a big deal for you as well. Because I was so into the Nexus. Yeah, yeah. And when they lost at SummerSlam... I I almost gave up. You know, I I did. I, I think like a lot of people, you don't give up, do you? You just like, oh well, I won't tune in next week. I mean, I'll skip next week too. And that's what happened. Mm. And it wasn't until CM Punk. I, I watched a lot of Ring of Honor instead. I went elsewhere and just stopped watching weekly TV. And it wasn't until Punk started to come up with the pipe bomb that I I got massively into WWE again. And then the Shield. And there was always something after that to keep yeah. me involved. Uh, if this wasn't my job. Uh, I, I would probably start to phase out again. I'm not saying I'd quit, but this would be where I start to go, mm, I'm going to miss this week. Uh, I'm not going to watch that one. We mentioned this on the news show as well, that people often say that the, oh, I'm not going to tune in, I'm going to stop watching, is just, it's you know, it, it's, it's an empty promise because you'll always tune back in on Monday. That's what they always say. Like, oh, you'll be there on Monday. But ratings are at a you know all-time low unless Hogan and Flair are on the show. So... There are fans who have just been systematically chipped away and have just stopped watching, and you keep doing shows like this, and yeah, people will just stop watching, I guess. Yeah, it makes people. me feel sad. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I'm sad. I, would, I don't, don't, I don't like feeling sad. I would have given this show a uh, two out of five. I yeah, because uh, there was stuff to like. I enjoyed the first um, two matches. We, we did talk about that. Based on the finish, I've got to give it a one out of five because it's, it's that damaging. It's yeah, that it's, damaging. that's very true. Uh, so let's get on with the, I'll finish off the rest of the Super Chats on the main topic, which is, of course, the finish. Matt Dennis says, I feel like I'm in a toxic relationship with WWE. They break my heart over and over, and I keep coming back. But now there's someone new, and they have a wrestling dinosaur. <laughs> I saw an amazing tweet about Luchasaurus today that really made me laugh. It was like, AEW keeps saying they want a more realistic presentation. Why doesn't Luchasaurus have feathers then? 
WWE have wrestling dinosaurs too. Yeah. Booking the company. Yeah. Thomas They're Fred, also going to be at Crown Jewel. Thomas Freddy says, WWE fans to AEW confirmed. You rock. If WWE didn't want Seth to lose, have Hammer fall, lights out, lights on with Seth in the claw, laughter, lights out, Monday, open, lights out, laughs, Seth in the ring? The, N- no, because no. that means they travel, they, they teleported. Uh, Edgar Berlanga says, am I the only one that thinks a title belt would hold Bray Wyatt down? Then don't book him in title matches. I, I disagree, but WWE clearly thought that there was money to be made by putting him in a title match. I would have preferred to have Bray versus Cena, Bray versus Taker, and you, you hold off the title Completely. match until six months after well, all those losses. We all said when, uh, when they first put him out, we were like, this seems a bit early. But I don't think it would have held him down. Uh, BF3 Vortex writes, Funny and sad at the same time how we were all hyped after SummerSlam and equally worried how and when they will ruin Bray again. No care for fans. Nope. <sighs> Party on Sparty18 says, Been in the coma since SummerSlam. How's the theme? <laughs> <laughs> Just go back in the coma. <laughs> Hit your head on something. Uh, BF3 Vortex again says, do they care for social media? You have almost as many followers as the billion dollar WWE viewers. Maybe listen to us. Isn't Bray in control? Vince McMahon's ultimately always in control. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kamama says the ending makes sense because it's far too early to put the title on Bray. Remember, guys, it's a marathon, (laughs) not a one night sprint. (laughs) Sarcasm, obviously. I thought I didn't realize it was sarcasm until the end. Yeah. I was I, I I felt the rage rising I as I was reading that. <laughs> uh, you worked us, brother. <laughs> Canal Elm probably says SmackDown and Hell in a Cell had a great opener and the worst finish. What's the point of Bray taking all that offense without making a comeback until after the match? Great question. Mm. A great question. And one we can't answer, unfortunately. Yeah. Start recording. I've not long woke up, and all I've seen is these negatives about The Fiend losing. Spoilers, lol. Should I still watch the pay-per-view anyway? Watch the first two matches. You know, you got, you got to watch it. you got to watch the main event. Do to, you? Yeah, to see, like, to see what happened. Or you could go outside, read a book, <laughs> learn another language. There is always that. Uh, Skiroborg, Brit Reigns, writes, The ref stoppage is equivalent to Luke Craig's surprise <laughs> enhancers. <laughs> Also, if it was a serious call, definitely should have thrown the X. Yeah, ringing the bell did the job, I guess. John De Pietro, Randy Datsun's number two fan. Bray Wyatt to AEW confirmed. I don't <laughs> Imagine if he just quits after this. They've given him so much creative freedom, yeah. I think he's very happy. Uh, Rex Joseph Calmarin, are people still invested in Bray after this? Great question. Well, I suppose we'll see <clears throat> over the next couple of weeks. I'm almost too consumed by rage at WWE to know how I feel about The Fiend as a character And now. where he's going next, yeah. yeah. So I can't, I don't know yet. Uh, Jude Augustine, what if the Red Hell WWE is doing, what in the Red <laughs> Hell is WWE doing with The Fiend? Uh, very angry face emoji. Rex Joseph Calmarin again. Bray did say he'll see us all in hell. Yep, well, there we go. Not booking hell. Hamish Jolly, Taker turns up at Raw and Fiend gets him. Hashtag anything. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It almost feels like a step down. Mm. That Saudi, Saudi match, yeah. though. Uh, God, he'll probably lose to Taker. Oh, great. <laughs> Beige Shore 415. It's I hope Bray didn't re sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bray Shore. Beige Shore 415. I hope Bray didn't re sign with WWE and goes to AEW. I think he's probably there for a while. Yeah. yeah. It, but at least a couple more years he's got in his contract. Jackson Bowman. I was so frustrated with the main event that I went to sleep and dreamed that WWE put AEW matches with AEW stars on Raw tonight to make up for Hell in a Cell. Blimey. It's quite the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Louis De Silva with a very generous donation. Thank you. I always say Bray should never have fought for the belt so soon, but WWE pulled the trigger and understandably so. So obviously Fiend wins. Unfortunately, this was the most colossal F up I have ever witnessed beyond disgusting. It's And you know what? I didn't think about it until you said it, but it is Nexus. It's Nexus SummerSlam 2010 where they were such a hot act and that one match completely derailed them. Mm. Cyber Saiyan, Bray should have left after the next snap. Lights go out and he's gone. When they come back, he doesn't care about titles. He only wanted to take out Seth. Again, you, you've, it, that's bad. Yeah. I, I don't think that would have worked. No. 
Daniel Graver. The ending was uh, that they don't want Rollins to lose over anyone, another company man, a la Cena Reigns. Oh, so they don't want Rollins to lose unless it's to another company man like Reigns or Cena. They get too stuck on one person. Everyone else gets buried like Ryback. Nexus, so damn frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryback, of course, buried twice there because he was in the Nexus. <laughs> Asriel P, 33,000 plus dislikes on the Hell in a Cell Fiend Rollins video on WWE's YouTube channel, but 9,000 likes. Who the heck is liking it? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my first ever super chat. Well, oh, thank, thank you, very, you very, much. very much. And the answer, likely Russian bots. <laughs> yeah. James Krause, there is a lot of thoughts on this main event finish. Yeah. Oops, my DQ from earlier was wrong because I didn't see the finish as I had to be up super early to make a delivery. They killed the fiend! Yeah, I mean, we all thought it was a DQ loss in fairness until apparently WWE.com had to correct us all. Mm. Samanda Lee! Mm. Ah, boy. They should have just given the fiend the belt. They chose the worst option out of all of them, the ref stoppage. Fiend to AEW confirmed. Yeah, it was just... There's so, so yeah. many other... There's so many other better bad ways you could have done it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Including Undertaker. Thomas Freddy again. Red Light had me wanting Rod Stewart to come out <laughs> and sing Roxanne. That's the police. Why don't you put on the red light? <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's the police. Yeah. Did, did yeah. Rod Stewart do it's a cover? Sting. Yeah, it's... There's a wrestling joke there you missed out. <laughs> sting to come out and <laughs> sing Roxanne. <laughs> Chopper Rocks. Seth and WWE now have more heat than Elias in Seattle. Swaffed for life. Probably Thank the, you very much. The one-year anniversary of that yeah. epic heat promo, yeah. yeah look at, and look at both guys now, Elias and Kevin Owens. On the subject of Becky versus Sasha, Jesse Venable said, uh, the Swafter that is cursed when watching WWE shows must not have watched the opener because Becky versus Sasha was amazing. He clearly watched the main events. Yeah, that's the guy who, one of our viewers who will take a break from wrestling and it gets really good. As soon as he comes back, it's scary. <laughs> It gets awful again. Uh, Timon Sumaki says, Becky, ver uh, sorry, Becky, Becky versus Sasha was match of the night. Don't agree with the result. Rest of the show, rubbish. Did pop for the green miss, though. Big fan of Muta. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you that the tag match was. Yeah, it was my match. I enjoyed it more. Yeah. Uh, I'll t I will take on the women's tag title situation now. Joe Nero West 7 says, the biggest bright side to Hell in a Cell was that Asuka again has a title reign. Yeah, that's really good. So I mean, it's... May as well be the 24-7 title, really. Someone said that Tamina has a main roster title now before Sami Zayn. <sighs> but I don't want Sami Zayn winning a 24-7 title. I'll be honest. Tamina was wrestling during the Divas era where <laughs> it felt like everyone won that title. So mm -hmm. I'm actually stunned that it's taken her this long to win a singles title. Um, Venom Kitsetsu says, Favourite part was the Kabuki Warriors winning. Maybe they'll be in NXT since Raw and SmackDown will have exclusive rosters. Title defences will be difficult. And they did say on the show, it's only defended on Raw and SmackDown. Uh, Venom Kitsetsu says, Sent the uh, previous Super Chat before I knew the women's title. In fact, yep, cool. Um, T20G says, Paige has had neck surgery. She said so on Twitter. Yeah, but they're also not mentioning her on commentary anymore. Yeah, they've completely dropped all references to her so yeah. and to be honest that's probably for the best yeah, yeah. she was a real anchor not to excuse the pun with Kyrie Sane in the same on, uh, on uh. that tag team I would have liked if that was the case though and they know Paige is going to be gone for a while which is how next surgery usually works it's scheduled in you can do a beat down from Asker and Sane that doesn't hurt Paige that's a storyline and then you know that's the heel why turn. are you trying to write storylines it's not what this is about. Mm. And lastly, Start Recording said, would you rather have one pair of tag team titles or one women's championship? Well, we there is one pair. Oh, what, you mean either one or the other? Yeah, so, yeah. I think singles, yeah, yeah. one women's championship. I think you say this one. Uh, so in the miscellaneous section, Joe Quindy. Some don't realise that the cell also got <laughs> yeah. buried. Yep, think about the uh. cell, man. Justice for the cell. Greg Parisi, your thoughts on the trending hashtag cancel WWE network? Even, well, it's a small percentage do it. Yeah, I, I th usually I would say there's no, there's nothing to these, and it's just people getting very angry, but they don't actually cancel. This one feels different, and it's there's a precedent set from it now from the Saudi Arabia shows from last year where there were 
noticeable declines in subscriber numbers. Mm. And that's the last thing you want. Those are your hardcore fans, the network subscribers. But they've got when Fox there's a wrestling war on. They've got Fox money. They've got those Fox views instead now. Miles35. Hello, Ollie and Luke. Any thoughts on the rumours? Cody wanting to buy the bunkhouse stampede. Also watching five minutes behind. So hello from the past. Oh, hello. Travel. Hello. What's uh, the bunkhouse stampede? I think it was a pay-per-view. Or it might have been a match. I can't really remember, to be honest. Oh, I think I did hear these rumours, yeah. I thought he wanted to buy war games. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, Tim Arndt says, on the bright side, the next WWE pay-per-view is on Halloween. My birthday! Which pay-per-view was that again? Crown Jewel, goddammit. <laughs> For God's sake, WWE. Yeah, uh, I don't think we're going to have any Halloween sets in the... I don't think that will go down too well in that country. No. Well, they had The Undertaker, I suppose. Van Thomas, do you think the titles will be rebranded soon? The SmackDown title becomes the Universal title and Raw title becomes World. Would explain that dud finish. That's what you spoke about with Bray potentially moving. Well, it's, it's kind of the opposite of that because if, oh, yeah, if Bray point. had won, he would have gone over to SmackDown. But yeah, I, I wonder if Fox have ponied up the money and like they've got, they hold all the cards that mm-hmm. they wanted The Fiend on SmackDown, so you can't give them the... The red title. Sorry, I've just seen the next comment from Am- Aman Saeed. Imagine the fiend joins Team Flair. Ah. That was amazing. Uh, Jake C. Bray Wyatt, Bo Dallas, and Curtis Axel form a team, and the alter egos of the fiend with hurt and heel. Absolutely not. No, the last thing he needs is lackeys. Uh, Jobber JJ, 496, Ollie Davis is number one fan. I don't want to see WWE was the most talked about on social media graphic on Raw. Plus, who the hottest thing in WWE? Seth Rollins' new reign of terror. Yeah, well, you know, they can always spin this to be like, look how much people were talking about us on social media yesterday. And, like, we were the front page of IGN. Just, like, a really quick graphic. Uh, Do you want to take over? I'll take over. Uh, Alex Ramirez says, A-E-Dub, A-E-Dub, A-E-Dub. Yeah, lots of AEW chants towards the end of the match. Noticeably so. Like, the first time that's... Another company really feels like it's been chanted for since Impact or TNA at December to Dismember. Um, which also was a pay-per-view that only had a, a handful of matches advertised. Yeah. Two, in fact. Uh, Thomas Freedy says, Is WWE doing too many pay-per-views? Maybe do only five a year. I like once a month. I like how you can have four weeks of TV build and then you have the pay-per-views. Uh, but yeah, I would, you know... I, I don't know, though. Yeah. It's, the, the answer isn't changing that model. I think it's just do it better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Seymour Mendez says, lovely venting with the boys. Very therapeutic. If you want more therapy, we're going to be playing 2K19 on Screen Stalker in just 10 minutes. So go over there, get the, the tab open, and we can watch us beat Seth Rollins with Bray Wyatt. I like this one from Kean Harvey, who said, I can already see next year's Royal Rumble ending in a countout. <laughs> Uh, Mayan Speed says, Dynamite and Hell in a Cell finishes have been switched. One got DQ'd when it should have gone ahead, and the other one went ahead when it should have been DQ'd. Refs need to ref. Yeah, but we get paid by AEW, so... Well, I was going to say... I was actually going to defend them, because I really like what Cody has done. Because people have been asking on Twitter, being like, and the Young Bucks have done it as well, where they've said... Look, it's the, it was the referee's call to make it. They've kind of turned it into like it's a very real thing. It's like the referee made the decision to keep the match going, but it's been discussed with those referees. So mm. rules are being more established with, within the sort of the wider universe of AEW. So it was, I, I think they've acknowledged that it was a, an error, but are trying to turn it sort of like into a mini storyline. That's very wise. Yeah, yeah, you can say that it was the first, it was the main event of our first TV. The referee thought, better to carry it on yeah yeah uh nathan michael says would the wwe be in a better place right now if they switched the match design from brock kofi with seth fiend so seth just runs and fiends hits sister abigail and the man oh, yeah. and wins yeah yeah that would have been perfect yes <laughs> and then kofi could have taken it a while and you could have a kane velasquez running for the dq there kofi could keep the title brock loses nothing the mma feud that doesn't need the title could just be based on their history what a concept. Uh, and I'll do this last one, then I'll throw it over to you. Uh, Jude Augustine says, support WrestleTalk, boo, what culture wrestling? <laughs> hey, Simon's going to have a match with um, our boy Sammy Callahan. Maybe we could sponsor Sammy Callahan. He oh, come out with a WrestleTalk yes, graphic. Yes, I like it. Could you send him a tweet, actually? <laughs> yeah. And we can ask him. Yes. Do you want to represent WrestleTalk? Oh, I don't know. It's probably, I don't know, politically if that will work. <laughs> it's worth Slide an ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slide in there. Nicholas Crump. It's pretty sad when WWE fans know the rules of the match is better than the writers. I sometimes wonder how WWE logic works anymore. Yeah. 
pretty much. If you go onto one of our Hell in a Cell videos, the top comment is someone who's put loads of rules, like mm. parody rules for <laughs> WWE. It's quite funny. I start. Oh, sorry. No, you go. Yeah. Ed. Start recording. After this monumental week of wrestling, I only have one question: Would you rather fart every time you laugh or burp every time you cry? I think we've spoken we've, about this. Yeah, I think we said. Um, I would burp because yeah, I don't cry it that much. I mean, I cry a lot when I'm mm. watching films, so maybe that's a terrible option for me. And when I masturbate. I'm <laughs> uh, King Rasta says, Y'all are upset about The Fiend. I'm still pissed on how Kofi lost Should the New Day Go Heal. Is this why they did The Fiend thing? To make us forget <laughs> about the, uh, the fan fury at uh, Kofi Brock? Uh, Trenton Brown, tinfoil hat theory. Vince has intentionally booked Seth so badly as a champ that fans will be begging for another Roman Reigns title run. I don't know. Maybe the guy's incredible comeback from cancer is enough to get him over as a baby face anyway. Uh, Josh Burke. So where was the ref stoppage for Mick Foley? Excellent question. Referee could have stopped it at any time. Referee could have stopped the uh, three-on-two hand cell match that we reviewed quite recently where Triple H broke a sledgehammer over the back of Vince McMahon's head. That a lot more about concussions and <laughs> sports injuries has advanced in those Maybe, years. Yeah. So it's just a safer world. We should be thanking the referee. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even joke without getting angry. Joe Jose Quinde says, who's ready for tonight? Wild cut, I mean draft showcase. <laughs> what is oh, the yeah. draft showcase? So they said that Raw, because Raw's not a draft show tonight. The draft starts on Friday. Tonight is a draft showcase evening. Mm. I don't know what it means. They just said it. Lee Spicer, I read from Sean Ross Sapp that Vince was laughing at the fan reaction to the main event last night. <sighs> if true, that shows how WWE really thinks of its fans. Yeah, that, that is, mate, if that's true, that is a real indication of what this company thinks of you. Marcus94, honestly, do you think WWE give an F about the fans and what we want? Like, at what point would they think this would go down <laughs> well and was the correct finish, given up with the main roster completely now? There you go. Yep. The more people like that, and then WWE's ratings will be affected. Heavy Metal Mike, this pay-per-view should be renamed Eleanor Cell. Oh, that's a good gag. I like it. Daniel Vitell, Luke, you also lost a bet as well. Ali and Nakamura haven't faced each other at all but yet. But we didn't make that bet official. I know. Should have. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I Neon, didn't want to make two bets. Neon Palette, what kind of BS finish do you think will end Helena Cell next year? I think it was very similar to a comment we got earlier. We said rope breaks. Yeah, I'm going to go count out. Uh, Gazzatola of Rock and Roller. Missed the first 40 minutes of you going live because of stupid work. Sorry. Well, yeah, priorities. Uh, really looking forward to seeing how WWE screw up the Hell in a Cell main event next year. Hey, you know, we're setting a standard now. Uh, yeah, they got... <laughs> oh, God, I can't even... I'm exhausted of just hate now. Uh, Zachary Jenkins, is it bad my little brother and I can book a better <laughs> wrestling show on WWE 2K19? No, you take that creativity <clears throat> and you run your own wrestling company. Adam Freeman, my theory is The Fiend has messed with WWE TV, but has done nothing serious yet. But now since WWE officials have screwed him in hell in a cell, now The Fiend will make WWE pay. It's not much, but I need something. Gotta hold on to at least something, yeah. Canal, Canal... Elm Probabile, odds that people at Super Arabia won't know Fury. I mean, people in this room don't know who Fury is, and that guy's me. <laughs> yeah, apparently he's not like that big in America either. Well, and we're in the UK. Someone said when we met them in Nottingham at the WrestleGate Pro Show that they're wondering if he's using it because he was a big boxing fan, saying, I wonder mm. if he's using this as his springboard into America. Potentially. Uh, Ryan Sig here. How bad do you think Seth Rollins will get booed tonight on Raw? Also, keep up the amazing work, Ollie and Luke. Good question. Well, I think a lot, and it's going to be very cathartic for me to watch. WWE would probably, if I was them, I'd keep him off the show. Mm. I wouldn't have him on the show. I think that's a smart move. Uh, Wolver Index. Wolverine, Wolverine DX. Wolverine DX. <laughs> have you ever read before? <laughs> Not when all the <laughs> words are one single word. Brazzers just sent a tweet to WWE uh, asking <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, 
if they need help to write a coherent and logic logical story, I love it when tweet Ality. when porn companies keep like trolling WWE for like their acting and their yeah. storytelling. It's very good. Limps oh, yeah, says the again. exact same thing. They've got the actual wording though. Hey WWE, let us know if you need advice on how to craft logical and coherent storylines with satisfying finishes. There you go. Cheerios. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> love that. This is a good oh, news story for you there, Randy. I've, I've already got it out. Yeah, <laughs> I bet you have. I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Donnie Simmons says, if Edge being cleared is true, I'm calling that his music will hit during Rollins' promo tonight, and he challenges him for the uh, Universal Championship as a way to distract from last night's finish. Could be a way, using the nostalgia bump to distract people. That's a way to get people to hate Rollins more. Who are they going to cheer out of that program? (laughs) Nicholas Crump says, which wrestling show was the best for this crazy week of wrestling? Raw, NXT, AEW, SmackDown, or Hell in a Cell? By the way, big fan of you guys. Keep up the great work. I'm going to say AEW just because it was different and it's exciting and it's historic. Um, I'm going to say NXT because I thought the in-ring wrestling was really, really good. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm kind of on leveling with them and and AEW Um, but I'm an anti-WWE guy so what do I know Um, Tejas Ray Reed says uh, in the WWE YouTube video of the Seth Fiend match the boos aren't edited also there's a video going around of Seth shouting at the crowd Seth turning heel yeah we've discussed it I I don't think they will turn him heel Kratos is a forgotten son. One of our Patreon pledge hammers says, despite Bat Hell and Cell being very bad, I'll share positive vibes instead. Thank you, Rust Talk, for all the hard work and extra hours you put in this par- a very busy past week. Lack of sleep isn't easy. Wrestle Talk for, for, for life. Thank you very much, Kratos. Uh, and Amo That's says, uh, never giving WWE a dime again, only pirating it now. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's one way around it. Uh, Shane Gensler says, I recently posted a prediction for Luke. Uh, actually liked it on Twitter. I just reposted it on Luke's recent tweet. Any chance you guys could give a quick read and share your thoughts? I haven't got Twitter open at the Do moment. Do you remember what it was? I don't. I'll to... Well, if you get it up, I'll, uh, you carry I'll on. start going through the comments that have come in since we started all the Super Chats. Penelli Jelly. WWE just released Jeff Hardy. What? Really? No. Well. Uh, oh, nothing official from nothing WWE. Nothing official from WWE. Okay, thank you, uh, <laughs> Lady Lou, for letting us know there's nothing official on that. Woof. No. Yeah. Okay. Just a rumor, folks. Calm Just a down. rumor. Uh, limps again. On a more serious note, the wrestlers only portray the collective thinking of the writers and frigging VKM, Vince McMahon. But the bury the wrestlers' character anytime we like. But it's not right to hit their humanity. Okay. Well. Well, yeah, well, yeah well, that's that's how we treat everything. And if anything, we try and like criticize the writing team more than any individual's yeah. character and all their performances of those characters. Well, that like the guy who's mad at not mad at <coughs> Seth, but the guy who's got the Seth Rollers isn't cool sign. And then there's a guy, I think it's a guy holding the camera or someone just saying like, it's not Seth, it's bad booking. Yeah. But Seth is treating it like it's a personal attack on him, but actually it's an attack on the writers. Eric DeRiggy, WWE is officially WCW circa 2000. I will say it's never that bad. It's not that bad. When people say it can't get any worse, it's not WCW 2000 bad. It's WCW 1999 bad. Uh, Daniel J, they say bad things happen in threes. Bad Raw ending, bad SmackDown ending, and bad Hell in a Cell ending. Well, hopefully that's the end of it. It's not been a great week for, uh, for main roster stuff. Daniel Travis. What was the goddamn point on this match? <laughs> <laughs> Simple. I like that one. Yep. Uh, Globits haven't watched since July. Might stop pay-per-views too. So I think they've only been watching the pay-per-views, uh, not weekly TV. Glenn Leslie, Women's Heel Faction, Asuka, Sane and Shirai? Uh, sorry, um, Women's Heel Faction, just because they're all Japanese, I'm not really mm. massively keen on the idea. Uh, on, I've, I found that tweet that someone again, it was their uh, prediction for The Fiend versus Rollins. It's, it's quite long, but I'll try and get through it as quickly as possible. It says, uh, maybe at Hell in a Cell, The Fiend listens to his gloves near the end of the match, but the heel gloves finally speak to him. This could cause The Fiend to be forced to leave the match, maybe uh, have the show shut down, and when it comes back on, he's reluctantly gone. Um, I think this is just sort of their way of uh, sort of fantasy booking out of it. So yeah, actually listen to the heel hands. For a change. Oh yeah, that could have worked, but still, that's still a, the best bad option. Yeah, the correct option is Fiend winning <laughs> and getting the title. Pace of Dawn, Seth let the Fiend in because he was turning, he was going to those dark places in himself. Could Bray be creating a new stable starting with Seth? I don't think so. 
Hell Lord 247, still love The Fiend, but last night hurt to watch. I think that Pacer Door one's going to come back to bite you in the ass when they, uh, they're a oh tag team God. by the end of this night oh, show. <laughs> oh, a tag team. Uh, Obo 299, you would think the WWE would try their best with AEW doing so well. Instead, they purposely book this awful main event they must have known would not go down well. Do they take AEW seriously or not? Well, they take them seriously enough to move their developmental show to the USA Network and give it the 15-minute overrun and put on a takeover card to try and steal viewers away from them. So they take them seriously enough. Well, it's seriously to an extent. It's like, oh, okay, you're going to try and muscle in on NXT. Mm. But they must not consider main roster and AEW as yeah. even close. Uh, Eric DeRiggy, WWE fans to AEW confirmed. I'll hand over to you, Luke. Uh, J- Jagan Kaiser, Kaiser says, All right, lads, Hell in a Cell 2019 or the uh, Royal Rumble 2015 ending, which Roman won, which was worse. I'd Hell in a Cell. I'd say this. Yeah, yeah completely. Jade Starr, um, who has done the new theme for the Wrestle Talk podcast. It's really good. It's excellent. Uh, thanks for all your work over this massive week. Well, thank you for your hard work. There's a little heart for you there, Jade. You rock. Um, Tristan, uh, Tristan Thorne says, You had one job, WWE, and you failed miserably. Hashtag justice for the fiend. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Hill says, Seth should relinquish the title on Raw and leave for a year or two. <laughs> then they have a tournament that the feed runs through to get the title. Uh, I don't think the fiend in a tournament capacity works. I don't think Seth leaving for two years, as much as I'm not into him right now, would work either. Relinquishing the title, I think, he needs to be beaten for it. So now I'm not a fan of that. King Tillman said, saw a comment on the Seth versus Bray match on YouTube. Said, imagine having no title matches at Clash of Champions 2020. In the ways of like devaluing a gimmick. Yeah, you joke, but a non, the only non-title match nearly headlined that pay-per-view. Uh, BF3 Vortex says, before I forget, you mentioned Owens just now. Parallels here. Bray and Kev are both great talkers and are really good in the ring. Both not fit. Yes, Vince. But Bray's in amazing shape. Mm. Michael Dominguez says, Hell in a Cell ending better than uh, AEW ending with generic heel standing tall. No, not even close. Yeah. This is this is like top 10 most misjudged moments for me ever. Yeah. In, in the immediate reaction, of course. A week later, that could change. I wonder if this will be one of those things we're talking about in 10 years' time, like the Nexus loss mm. at SummerSlam. Uh, KVNGJC says, uh, do you think they did this to prevent Rock Brock versus Fiend? So you don't have to book that match at Survivor Series. You, you don't could... have to book this match either. Yeah. So no. Uh, David Herrera says, justice for Mick Foley. Mm, I'll take over. King Tillman paid last night to watch Help in a Cell. <laughs> that was the medics. They tried to give Help in a Cell. Thomas Freedy, which was worse, Kofi Burial or the Fiend booking? Fiend booking. Fiend booking for me too. Vince Ramachana... Dr- Ramachandran. It's Vinay as well. Vinay. Ramachandran. This should have been called What the <laughs> Hell in a Cell. Nice, I, I like, like that. that one. Dan Sky, you boys have to go watch AEW panel at New York Comic Con. It was gold. Even their <laughs> panels are better than WWE episodic TV. Dan Van Sky. Dan Van Sky. Rocket. Zach Sora, WWE isn't getting my money for the next pay per view. I'll give it to you instead. Well, thank you very much, Zach. I think everyone should do that. <laughs> uh, Tony Capiroli. Cap- Capirola. Capirola. Draft Fiend to SmackDown, have him attack Brock when he faces Kane, they have a match, and he kicks out of like two or three F5s and then destroys Brock. I mean, if we're talking about how to rebuild Bray back to where he was, that's one way of doing it. I don't think they'll do that because they want to keep that Brock-Kane match strong. Yeah, I think they're paying a lot of money for that match. Humberto Neverez. This botch has gone more viral than anything (laughs) WWE have tried to get trending R.I.P., that's good. Neely Bobber, could the main event be saved by making it a double turn? I'm out of ideas. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what I said at the top of the show. I wonder if it was meant to be a double turn. I don't know whether that helps, but it's yeah. something. Uh, Kyle Fitzpatrick, this title is meant to be for the WWE <laughs> Universe. Well, you know, back in December, they said we're going to listen to what the fans want. And then reports of Vince McMahon cackling at us <laughs> as we boo him. And Jake Leach. Fiend always says, let me in. Rollins, let him in. Uh, Jason P. Sin says, uh, was Bray held at gunpoint until he agreed to the finish? I've, by sledgehammer point, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Francisco Tapia says, have the Fiend attacks uh, Vince in gorilla position. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, the well, you know, this is, that would be 
well, a story, I guess a storyline, Bray going after Vince, but this shouldn't be about the backstage workings of WWE. It should be about Vince. It should, it's the fiend going after people to get that title. This is not a backstage reality-based storyline. It's a freaking fiend. <laughs> the shower lurker, Brian Claps on stage, was that real or a work? I've heard that he might be injured. Daniel Bryan. Yeah. I didn't hear about this. Meltzer said that, but he hasn't uh, waiting on an update. Okay. Uh, Pavi let Andy out of his cage says, I think the only way to save that DQ is if Seth paid the ref to give him the win, turning him heel. Why am I putting up my hopes with WWE's history? Oh, that's terrible. That's but great. I get it does fit in Seth's look at my bank balance gimmick. Christian uh, Procell says, Fiends to Smackdown, squash Brock, problem solved. I mean, problem still there but you know at least it's something and we've only got a handful more to get to neely bobber says uh what if they had fiend go over um what if they had the fiend go over stands in the middle of the ring with the title staring at rollins lights go down go back up seth is laying in the ring and the title is laying there with seth we, everyone suggested this when the match was booked and i said i still didn't like it because i think it makes the title seem really unimportant and you want your hottest thing in the company to want the belt because surely that elevates the belt. This devalues the belt. I yeah, I totally agree with you. But having what we got, well, yeah, I, I now think that's a genius idea. Uh, Anton H says Seth uh, Seth Brock Flair Lynch at Survivor Series oh for the millionth God. time. Oh yeah, God, we might get. Oh. <sighs> uh, Devante Lee, will someone win a submission match with pinfall soon? <laughs> Uh, and Terran Dusant says, Saudi probably didn't want Fiend as champion. Well, then don't book the champion. He knew that show was coming up. And uh, let's give a shout out to Christopher Dean for your donation and no message. Thank you all so, so much. What? I mean, a lot of people Whoa. had things to say yeah, about this show. Probably the most super chats we've ever got of any Wrestle Ramble or Wrestle Talk Live, Indeed. I think. Uh, please go over to Screen Stalker now. Andy, pop the link in the video description and the, the chat so everyone can go over there because we'll be back very shortly with Laurie, Housemate Simon, Chopper Pete, talking about all the latest video game and movie news along with we're all going to play WWE 2K19 and we're going to put this right. Bray Wyatt will hopefully beat Seth Rollins. We're all going to try and have a go in Hell in a Cell. Uh, but for the meantime, please click the... Videos that have just appeared on the desk to catch up with the latest awesome Wrestle Talk things. This button right here, which will make you a pledge hammer on Patreon, where I've just realized there is no one to end the stream. Uh, Randy's ending the stream. Randy's ending the stream. Excellent. Uh, where well, you can participate in Wrestle League, which is our fantasy predictions league. I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Luke Owen. Go over and join us on Screen Stalker now, because that was a very bad wrestling show. <laughs>